Justin Morgan. I'm one of the automotive instructors here at Sinclair College, and today we're going to talk about the limitations and how to use an ohm meter, which is part of a digital multimeter. We have two different types of meters today. We have a manual ranging meter, and we have an auto ranging meter. Uh, a lot of times when students are first learning about basic electrical, one of the concerns that they have is when they use a manual ranging meter, sometimes they get skewed information and they get confused on what their reading should be, and they write down or record incorrect information uh, given the specifications. So today what we're going to talk about is how you use a manual ranging meter and then compare that to an auto uh, ranging meter. We're also going to show you the limitations of an ohm meter. So a lot of students want to use it and technicians want to use it to find what they consider to be high resistance or unwanted resistance. And in some cases it can be okay to use that tool, uh, but it has a lot of limitations around that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have both meters set up. You're going to see that both of the meters are going to be set in the black leads are going to be in the common hole. The red leads are going to be in the what we call the volts ohm hole. So we're going to be measuring resistance with ohms. We're going to be on the ohm scale here. This is a auto ranging on my right hand side, the gray one. And this is a manual ranging meter. And so the way I compare this for students is whenever you're looking at um, manual ranging versus auto ranging, if we're talking about a distance from here to uh, in Dayton, Ohio to Chicago, whether you are supposed to use inches or feet or miles to find that distance. And so most accurately, of course, we usually use miles uh, because it's probably what we want. Um, if we want to get exact, we might go miles, feet, inches. Uh, but in this case, we're actually going to go ahead and when a manual ranging meter is, you're doing that. You're basically coming up with the range that the meter can read. And so what we have here is a temperature sensor, and I know what the resistance should be of this. And we might want to measure the resistance of this for some given reason to compare it to a chart in the temperature. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our red lead and our black lead. There's two leads here. Uh, and so we're going to check our resistance here. We're going to make sure that they don't touch because if they touch, what's going to happen is you're going to show that they're going to show like it has low resistance. And right now we're just checking the resistance of our meter lead. So right now it should be under about one ohm. We're getting eight tenths of an ohm. The resistance that we're measuring is actually our wiring and our connections going up into our meter. So this is where typically a, a higher quality meter will show up or the leads at least will they'll have very uh, low resistance here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, we're going to touch, make sure these don't touch. And right now you're going to notice that it says what appears to be a one, it's actually an I. And the I stands for infinite. And what that means is that there's no path for current to pass. So resistance opposes uh, current flow. And so right now, if you take a look, there's no electrical path between the red lead and the black lead. If we put them together, you'll notice that it has low resistance or very low resistance, and there's a path for current to flow from the red lead to the black lead. And so when we're doing this, this is gonna have a specified resistance value. So what happens a lot of times is when students are using a manual ranging meter, they don't know that you start on the lowest range, 200 ohm scale, and move up to the 2,000, 20,000, 200,000, 2 million, and 20 million until it either becomes in scale or at the end of the highest scale, it still shows as infinite. So what we're going to do is you're going to notice, I'm going to notice, I'm again, I'm going to take a measurement. It shows infinite. I'm going to move it up to the 2,000 ohm scale. I'm going to make another measurement. It shows infinite. Move it up to the 20,000 scale, 20,000 ohms. And I should note when I'm doing this, that means that it will read up to that number. So if it's 20,000 ohms, this would have to fall into 20,000 ohms or below for it to measure. Anything above that, it's going to show infinite. I'm going to repeat that again. When measuring this, if it says 200, it's going to read up to only 200 ohms. 2,000, only up to 2,000 ohms. 20,000, only up to 20,000 ohms. So we keep moving it up so our scale gets greater. The reason you would start with the lower scale is if you have a smaller measurement, maybe like this fuel injector, where it might only be 10 to 12 ohms. So what we're going to do is now we're on the 200,000 ohm scale, and this dial line is a little twitchy, so I just want to verify. We're going to then go back up and check resistance again, and you're going to see 34.2. And if you look at the display closely, it says K ohms. What that stands for is it's 1,000 kilo. So you would take 34.2 times 1,000, so this is 34,200 ohms. And right now I'm getting a little bit of a loose connection, so we're gonna reconnect it. 34,200 ohms. That's how you use a manual range meter. Now, here's the nice thing about an auto ranging meter. If you take the leads up to it, and all you have to do is set it on the ohm scale, and we go up to it and measure it again. 
you'll notice that it says about 34,000.06 ohms. Now you say, well, this one said 34,000, this one said 34,200, and there's a little bit of a difference there. I would likely say that my meter on the right is gonna be a little bit more accurate, but you might wanna use that third meter to compare. So again, let's recap here. Manual ranging meter. We wanna make sure that we go from the lowest scale all the way to the highest scale. If it still shows the I for infinite when we get to the highest scale, what that means is that if you look at the connection, there's an open between their black lead and their red lead. And so there's no electrical path. And so that's again, showing you right now, infinite, there's no measurement great enough to put a measurement between these two leads, okay? Whereas an auto ranging meter, again, allows you to see and not have to do any selection. It does still say it's about 33, 34.2 K ohms. And so it still says kilo. So it still says thousands of ohms there, but it's already doing it without you having to select it. You just have to remember to put it what we call in base units. So you would do the math. You would know that kilo equals a thousand, the large M equals a million. And so you would do the math that way. So that's a little information about how to use a manual ranging meter compared to our auto ranging meter. The last thing I wanna show you when I'm talking about meters today is the limitation. A lot of times I'll see in service manuals and I'll see in uh, other sources, uh, service information, where it tells you to check resistance of the wire for unwanted or high resistance. And you can do this if the wire is completely open. However, the limitation here is when we're checking for a resistance, if we thought this wire could be bad, causing what we call high resistance or unwanted resistance and causing a voltage drop, which we've talked about in another video, what you can do is you would think that if there was an issue here, and we're checking on the gray meter, it says 0.2. Well, if you make that assumption that that's very low resistance, that the circuit must be good. We'll verify with the other manual ranging meter. I'm gonna go down to the 200 ohm scale. I'm gonna check it again. You'll notice it says about eight tenths, seven tenths of an ohm, going a little bit lower. So with that reading, most of us think a low reading means good. Here's the challenge. If we pull back this, and this is our starter cable, power side or ground side, what you'll come to see is that the path is not very good. And you'll see that all the conductors are all broken except for one or two. So it can pass current through this. It does not take a lot of electrical current and voltage and power to do this. And so therefore the circuit shows good. Now, if we were to try to pass 150 amps through this on your starter circuit while your starter motor's cranking, this would have a considerable voltage drop. So when checking for high or unwanted resistance on an automotive circuit, I always encourage students to do voltage drop if you can and when it's applicable. I would highly encourage you to stay away from using a ohm meter to check for unwanted or high resistance. So that's it for today. We hope that you will follow us and like us for more videos. And uh, we'll see you next week.